Mike Tyson is widely recognized as one of the most talented, explosive, and ferocious boxers in history. His knockout reel is the stuff of legend. But he wasn't just breaking ribs and jaws or eye sockets. He was also breaking records. To this day, he remains the youngest man ever to have won a world heavyweight title at the age of just 20. A record which still stands some 36 years on. But what was the secret to such early success? Today, we'll answer that question. John L. Sullivan is regarded as the first world heavyweight boxing champion under the Marcus of Queensbury rules. Historians still debate over the exact start date of his reign, but for argument's sake, we'll go with the Dominic McCaffrey fight on August 29, 1885, at which time Sullivan was 26 years old. No younger man would capture the heavyweight crown until James J. Jeffries broke that record 14 years later. Jeffries' record was subsequently broken by Jack Dempsey 20 years after that. Dempsey's record was broken by Joe Lewis 18 years after that. And Lewis's record was broken by Floyd Patterson 19 years after that. Patterson's record stood for 30 years until it was eventually broken by Mike Tyson. Today, 36 years on, Tyson's record still stands. And what's more, no one has even come close to breaking it. Historically, his nearest rivals are Floyd Patterson and Muhammad Ali, who previously captured the heavyweight crown at 21 and 22 years of age respectively. But the youngest since Tyson was Riddick Bowe at the age of 25, WBO title notwithstanding. This begs the question, why has Mike Tyson's record lasted so long? Many would argue that it comes down to a combination of his incredible talent, his abnormally young physical maturation, and having a Hall of Fame trainer whose style perfectly complemented Tyson's natural attributes. And they're not wrong, but there's actually a bit more to it than that. Firstly, the modern trend towards heavyweight champions being in their late 20s or 30s as opposed to their early 20s largely comes down to a shift in incentives. Traditionally, fighters tend to come from underprivileged backgrounds. In the 20th century, at the tail end of the industrial era, the crumbling inner cities were full of uneducated and unemployed young men, and boxing provided one of the few opportunities to escape poverty. However, for many years, there was no money in amateur boxing, so there was a lot of incentive to turn pro at a young age. But in recent decades, particularly in countries like Britain, many of the top-level amateurs actually get paid a decent amount through grants, endorsements, and sponsorships, so that incentive isn't as strong. Furthermore, highly decorated amateurs tend to attract lucrative professional contracts. The more medals you win, the more money these promoters are willing to offer you to turn pro. This has the effect of fighters staying amateur for longer. There's also the fact that there are far more career opportunities available to young men now than there were 40 or 50 years ago. And there are also a lot more distractions. Teenagers tend to have a short attention span and in the age of social media, their focus is often being pulled in a dozen different directions simultaneously. This is not conducive to success at a young age in a sport which requires such immense discipline and dedication as boxing. This might explain why fighters like Deontay Wilder, Anthony Joshua, and even Joe Joyce didn't pick up a pair of boxing gloves until their late teens or early 20s. However, even by the standards of the 1970s and 80s, Mike Tyson was still somewhat of an anomaly Joe Frazier became world champion at 26, George Foreman at 24, Leon Spinks at 25, Ken Norton at 34, and Larry Holmes at 28. So what made Tyson different? Well, we've already factored in the natural talent, the early physical maturity, and the techniques of Customato.
what a lot of people fail to consider is the fact that Tyson, unlike the vast majority of amateur boxers from the inner city, had access to professional training facilities, elite level sparring, and was under the mentorship of a Hall of Fame trainer from the age of 12 or 13. He was plucked from the Brownsville ghetto and adopted into a mansion in upstate New York where he had plenty to eat, lots of space and fresh air, and unfettered access to the gym. This is not the norm for most 13-year-old amateurs, but all of these factors allowed for a young Tyson to undergo an accelerated learning process. Furthermore, unlike most amateur boxers who are taught a point scoring style, Tyson was taught an aggressive power punching style from day one, which made for a much smoother transition to the professional ranks. He also didn't need to win Olympic medals or stay amateur for a long time to secure a pro deal because Costamato handled all of that in-house. It's no coincidence that the previous record holder, Floyd Patterson, was also guided by the same man. So essentially, what you had with Mike Tyson was the perfect storm. It was a confluence of favorable elements which facilitated the emergence of the youngest heavyweight champion in boxing history.